Okay, folks, I'm going to make a quick video of what I'm up to here with my lathe. Um, <clears throat> I'm making a, um, a special shell holder for a 22 long rifle. It's going to be a shell holder that... Whoops, I just dropped that. It's going to be a shell holder that's going to have um, the slot like a T-slot in here. This is already hollowed out a little ways, about that deep. It's hollowed out to the to the size of the 22 case. I'll show you that here. Okay, this case fits in here. It, I can open it up more later. It'll fit a new case right in there. This is a used one. It's a used one, so it might not go in. But anyway, that's hollowed out about a quarter inch deep, three eighths maybe. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to put a T slot in there so the shell fits in. It can slide through the side. And this is going to be the shell holder for the crimping. And <clears throat> what I want to do is machine out a chunk out of the side so I can slide the bullet in and out. And I tried a lot of stuff. I'm going to move this a little bit. I tried a lot of things. What I was going to try to do, I wanted to put a, um, I'm not using the tailstock. I wanted to uh, set up like a milling device here with uh, a, something with right angles, maybe big, a big chunk of, uh, angle iron or something. Now this angle iron fits on there. If I take this off, uh, it fits on the two bolts that hold it on right under, right here. There's two bolts, two, or two nuts in there. You have to unscrew this and you can take the nuts off or open the, the not nuts, or cap screws. And this can be tw t tilted. That's how these mini lays, uh, the tilt on the cross slide works here or whatever you call this part of the cross slide so you can angle this and those two screws uh, those two holes I just cut when I want to attach something I can drill a couple holes in it and and I can put it on here so when I mount this on I screw a Dremel in here that's what this hole is for that's uh, I think that's three quarter ten I, don't, I forget the, the size. But anyway, my Dremel screws right, my fake Dremel, it's a Black & Decker, screws right in that hole in the, the, the spinning part. The, the bit is on this side. And then I have a grinder, somewhat of a grinder that I can move in and out um, to grind stuff on the, on the lathe right there. Um, <clears throat> so I've used that method before. What I was going to do now it's get a thicker piece of metal. Have this old chisel. I don't have much for metal at all. I have a couple pieces of angle iron and, and a couple pieces of uh, stock that I'm going to use for making molds, but that's it. I, was, I thought about using this piece of metal from an old ice chisel. Um, <clears throat> and I have a, uh, a reamer. That, that cuts MT2 holes. It, it'll it'll ream an MT2 hole. So I was thinking of putting that on here, on the on the uh, cross slide. Obviously, all this stuff off, and put this on the cross slide so it has a, a capture hole for MT2. Then I could put a, a, a whoops. I could put a. Uh, MT2 thing in there and go back and forth with it this way and this way not up and down I have to shim it up and down but then I could um, put round stuff in here stock that I'm working on while the the um, bits are spinning in here the end mills and I could at least mill stuff that's that's able to be chucked in a three jaw chuck and uh, that would help so I was Monking around looking for stuff pretty much all evening yesterday, and I, I, I couldn't do it. So what I d ended up doing was, ended up just, this, this is from a bolt originally, 
but I got it shimmed in the uh, tool holder until I was able to, uh, you know, that, that shows that it's, that it's uh, centered. Now what I'm going to do is back it up. I'm going to back you up first. I'm going to back it up here. I wish I could go on the other side, but my, my uh, cross slide really doesn't go far enough. So I'm going to back it up and spin that. And then feed this into that, um, that, uh, what do you call that thing, that bit, uh, end mill bit. And uh, gr cut out that slot on this thing. And I've done a little bit of that with a different kind of a setup. And um, it's uh, kind of a hairy thing. A hairy uh, operation. This is not, and, and the way this is held in here, it's only held by two screws. So this thing could blow up on me, literally. I could have stuff flying all over here. It's kind of scary. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this right on camera, and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna take a real small pass first. Whoops! I'm looking under my armpit there. And uh, I'm going to use the, the big, this guy, to feed it rather than this guy. Not because, I know it's not as precise, but I can, I can yank it out of there real quick if I have to. That's why I would use that one. But uh, here we go. Oh wait, I got to put this, oh it's already on fast. I want to spin that puppy fast. So here we go. Is that on high? No, I don't think so. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. That's high speed. Make sure you're up there. Now right there should be about 2,000 RPM. Now hang on, folks. Here we go. And this, you know, obviously, this little thing is not the uh, most rigid. But that's how I'm doing a milling operation. Now I got, I haven't, I haven't looked at the depth. I don't know if that, I don't want to go too deep. So I'm going to cut, bring that out and go in a little bit farther. I'll be able to tell what the belly is off. When the bottom's out, it'll start going nuts. But this is uh, experimental milling like a crazy man <laughs> all right I think I might have gone too deep which I wish I wouldn't have but we'll see because that's going to be the base that's got to be flat where the bullet's going to sit and we want to go just a little less than halfway to make that slot correct. But basically, I figure you spin, spin it fast enough, it's not going to hook on there if I feed it slow. But I, I know nothing about milling. This is the second attempt at milling anything, actually. Actually, cutting pretty good. I'm going 
going in about, uh, I think that's about 15,000 to half a twist, maybe 20. So we're taking about 20,000 cuts here. So this is, uh, oops, I can't see it anymore, I must be halfway in. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm there. So that's it. Now we'll take that off. Let's see what we got here. I had that shimmed because it wasn't quite right. Yeah, well, you may be able to see that. I don't know. That's what we just milled. Now, obviously, I could just open that up a little more with a Dremel. And what else I'm going to do is, I have these little uh, diamond, these little bits that are diamond, they're T, they're T-shaped. And I have one that's, uh, they look like little poppet valves from, a, or little valves off of a, a motor. A regular, you know, four-stroke motor, they look like val little tiny valves. But they have diamond on the ends, and they you can cut slots with them. They're not great slot cutters, but you can cut slots with them. And I got an 11 millimeter one. Um, I made it one of these already. I don't know where I put it, but it, it didn't turn out right, so I'd have to make another one here. But anyway. Now I'm going to change this bit and put that uh, diamond bit in there, and uh, I'll I'll come back and I'll film that and come back and 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 when that's ready to go, I'll turn it back on. All right, we're on a top view of my lathe. Back up so you can get some reference here. There's a there's the uh, <clears throat> this is the little. Uh, grinding burr like a nail head only that the head part and a little bit up the shank is diamond coated with very fine diamond and they make them most people that buy those use them on carving rock carving stone but uh, if you use them right you can cut steel with them but it's a very laborious process. I'm putting this over here. Now I'm going to show you this. You're not going to have a very good view of it from there. I wish I could show you a better view. Try over here. I got to go over there. I shouldn't even have all this on camera, but I do. Wasting your time with all this. Now, let's see what we can see here. I can barely see this screen. It's such a tiny little screen on this camera. Well, you should be able to see that. I got her zoomed in a little bit. We'll see what happens. Now, I have it lined up. Get some oil inside there, oil on top. And basically, I'm feeding that one very slowly. This, it, it will cut through there. It's got to be held nice and tight though. Is that thing, if it moves, if it, it Move sideways a little bit, it's gonna complain. Of course, it's not as dangerous, that little thing is about as big as a nail. That decides to blow up, it ain't gonna hurt it much. Less likely to throw shrapnel out and kill me. I use a lot of oil on these diamond bits. Because they, uh, 
Otherwise, they do not last. Get a little juice there. See, that's cutting in there. So we're cutting a little slot for the rim of the bullet, rim of the shell. Yeah, this one's going nice. But the other one I made was much more difficult. Of course, I had it, I had it set up in a different manner before. This is actually a pretty good way to do this. Now, I, did, I will know when I get it in the right depth because the uh, shaft of the cutter of the burr will be in the middle of the shaft of the uh, okay, now I just I just hit the outside wall in there, or the inside wall and I'm going in a little more a little bit better than I could do I don't want to go too far on this Yeah, it, it's not cutting as easy now, I'll tell you that. Cutting through 100% steel here. Past that slot. So she's going. When I get it in, I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. I'll make that slot a little wider than it is. Not a fact. Not doing that now. I'm moving the carriage or just a little bit this way and this way, maybe a less than a sixteenth of an inch back and forth. Maybe you able to hear that. Or you can see it. I thought about buying a little teak slot cutter, but uh, there's nothing out there that's uh, the right size unless you get something real extravagant and expensive. I could get one, a 10 or 12 millimeter, those are pretty standard sizes, for a T-slot cutter. It'll cut, you can get them in one millimeter, two millimeter. I would get one probably two millimeters wide. And, uh, almost there. But, uh, certainly it only needs seven millimeters. That's how big the base of the, the rim is. But everything I, you know, I have to do a lot of experimenting and with how to do stuff because I don't have the right tooling. Of course, if I had the machines, I'd be experimenting anyway because this is not a normal procedure for doing anything here. Boy, she do not want to go all ass because that. I'm almost maxed out on my slide here. I thought it was getting hard on the thing, but it's the slide itself. Now, let's see. That just about got it. All right, I went a little bit farther than I probably should have. That should do it. Make that opening like just a little bit bigger. Whoops, going the wrong way. Darn it, now I gotta go all the way in. Because that the floor, the, the basically the floor of that 
shell holder has to be flat. And there's no other way to get it in there once I get this operation done. That should do it. Now, I used to just carve these in by hand with that rig. That's that's it. Uh, well, I suppose I should take it out of there and take a look at it. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this. That's my T-slot. Let's we'll see if a shell... I doubt if a shell fit there yet. It's going to have to be opened up a little more. But that's how she's going to go in once I open it up just a little more. There you have it.